and welcome back to the Turdford Show. Hey, today's topic is actually on radioactive elements and half-lifes. Uh, most people have a general idea of what it means to be a half-life. For example, let's look at this element. Every element has its own unique half-life. Look, carbon-14, 5,730 years. Uh, we can sit here and look at all these elements. Look at uranium. It's a massive half-life. Technetium, on the other hand, a six-hour half-life. So let's look at technetium because I kind of like the fact it's only a six-hour half-life. What it means is this. If you started with, I don't know, 100... This is the thing, 100 grams, 100 atoms, 100 pounds, 100, I don't know. The reality is the unit's not going to matter in this. Whatever initial number that we start with, if we start with 100 after 6 hours have passed, after 6 hours, what would be left? Half. That's why it's called a half-life. This is where a lot of people get messed up. Then they think, well, in another six hours, it's gone. No. In another six hours, once again, what happens? You're left with half, which means you come to 25. After another six hours, you're left with 12 and a half. So after 18 hours, you'd be to 12 and a half grams, atoms, pounds, or whatever it is that we've got at this point. Now, a really easy teacher class might make it as simple as doing this. And therefore, they might say, okay, class, how much is left after 24 hours? Oh, I don't know. Uh, another six hours. Oh, half of 12 and a half. That's two. Wait a minute. I can do that. 6.25. Hey, you know what? You could do it this way. This is a common sense approach. If everything was nice and perfect like this. The problem with doing a half-life problem is this. The problem with the problem, good grief. What if you actually tried to graph this? Say you started with 100, 50, 25, 12.5. I want you to look at this graph. 6, 12, 18, 24. Look at this graph. What would actually happen when you graph this? You start at 100, and in the first six seconds, it falls that far. And another six seconds, bam. And another six. Now, if you look at this line, what I have just graphed, this is a very distinctive function. This is an exponent function. This is a log function we're looking at. Specifically, this is a natural log function function, which is why in this equation I've got this little letter E in here to represent this natural log in this problem. If somebody wanted to sound like a pimp, they called it an Aperian logarithm because that's actually the guy that kind of come up with this thing. But anyway, let's just go straight into like doing some of the problems. I'm not going to go into too much of the background on what a Naperian or natural logarithm is. Let's just go straight to it. And so, i tell you what, let's do this, uh, let's, i take it back, let's do carbon-14. So, here's the deal. Before we can work any problem, now here is my formula. N equals N-O, E to the negative, and really it's not an N-O, it's really an N of zero. So, in other words, at zero, what did you start with? So, this is your initial number and then this is our I guess you could say our final number e is a natural log which is 2.718 if you don't believe me go check your calculator let's give this a shot real quick oh Casio see what happens there's my little e down here on my screen alpha e equals 2.718281828. So anyway, so there's what this E represents. It's this number in here. Now, looking further into this, what is that alpha symbol up there? Well, the alpha in this problem is actually what's known as a decay constant. If I'm going to do much with these problems, I've got to learn this. Here's the deal. Every element, every element, Every element has, ooh, let's sound sexier, every isotope, there, that's better, ooh, every radioactive isotope. Anyway, you get the idea. 
every isotope has its own decay constant that belongs to it. So we can sit here and we can use these half-lives to calculate these decay constants. Last thing you're probably wondering, okay, Turd Ferg, well, what does that T mean? T is easy. It can be time. Now, if you're wondering, does time have to be hours, minutes, or seconds? It does not matter. But if you did your decay constant in hours, your time has to be hours. If this is years, this is years. You have to make that part the same. It does not matter. So let's do this. This is exactly what we need to do. Let's do this. Carbon-14. Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years. So if you start with 100 grams, after 5,730 years, you would have 50 grams. Now, here's the problem. You could do this common sense approach if somebody set it up that way. Well, a lot of times the problems are not set up that way. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to find the decay constant for carbon-14. Once you have found this decay constant for carbon-14, you can use it on any other problem that references carbon-14. So you should probably be like, well, Turd Ferg, why don't you just give us this decay constant? Well, what fun would that be? I'm sure we could, like, Google that, but let's see how to calculate it. All we need is this. So look at the formula. N equals NO, E to the negative decay constant, lambda T. So I want to solve for lambda, which means by algebra, first thing I want to do is get rid of that NO. And this is where somebody's going to be a little confused. I'm going to divide both sides by NO, and that leaves me with this. E to the negative lambda t. Here's the thing. Look, look, look. This is a half-life, which means N over NO is a half. That's what makes this a half-life question. I know what that ratio is because somebody will be like, you didn't tell us N. You didn't tell us NO. I don't have to. It's a half-life, so it's always a half. And this is where somebody will kind of crap out based on their level of algebra. Here's the thing. How do you get rid of an E like this algebraically? Well, to cancel an E, you must do the opposite of an E. And remember, algebra is all about opposites. We're going to take the natural log of E. If you have no idea what that means... Here's what it means. To take the log of E, again, natural log, not L-O-G. I'm saying L-N, natural log. To take the natural log of E means E to what power is E. That's what I'm asking my calculator. Well, that's easy. You don't have to know anything about math to know E to what power is E. Lee, E to what power is E? Uh, one. Very good. He knows nothing about math. But he now knows that this is 1, which means if you take the log of E, it cancels it. But like all things in math, if I take the log of the right side, I also have to take the log of the left side. So the right side, the E is gone, and I'm just left with negative lambda T. So I'm going to have to actually get my calculator and take, where is it, ln of what do we say, a half, 0.5, and that equals negative 0 0.693147182, and I'm just going to round it off to negative 0 0.693. What's cool is you should maybe memorize from now on, whenever you take the log of a half, it's always negative 0 0.693. But anyway, I'm actually ready to kind of finish this. Negative 0 0.693 equals negative lambda, T was 5,730 years. Now, I won't remember that, that I used years in this. All right, the negatives cancel. So, 0. 0.693 divided by 5730 means my decay constant is 1.21 times 10 to the negative 4. And don't forget, I used years in this calculation. Now, this seems like a lot of work to get here. Eh, it's not. It's easy. It's very repetitive to find decay constants. So now, now that I have my decay constant for carbon-14 
I can answer any question about carbon-14 with this decay constant. This decay constant just tells you how quickly or how slowly an element is decaying. Uh, let's see if we can't do another question here. Extend the page maybe a little bit. How about this? What about this question? Let's just say somebody has found a bone. Here's my bone. That's, that's, wow, that's not a bone at all. Ooh, I could put like a little eyeball here and give them some teeth. And Okay, I digress. I'm going back. It's a bone. <coughs> Somebody finds a bone and they say, I know that that original living, whatever it was, had 100 grams of carbon-14 in it. And now they look at the bone, and I said 100, but I wrote 1,000. And now they look at it, and they find it only has 10 grams in it. So they do a little comparison. So the question is, how old wow i'm writing lots of little random dots no i'm not writing in arabic i'm just very sloppy anyway so the question is how old is this bone is it a dinosaur bone i don't know let's find out n equals n o e to negative lambda t this problem's about carbon 14 awesome i already know lambda for that 10 equals 1000 e to the negative Lambda T, and there's probably somebody watching going, why don't you go ahead and plug in Lambda? Because it's a massive ugly number, and I don't want to have to rewrite it over and over. So I'll wait. Do the algebra, solve for T. Divide both sides by a 1,000, which means this would be 0 0.01 equals E to the negative Lambda T. You just learned a second ago, I'm solving for T, so get rid of that E. Easy. Take the log of E. But if you take the log of E on the right side, you got to take the log of 0, 1 on the other side. And so, let's see, where is my calculator at? What is the natural log of 0 0.01? Do that. Boom. Negative 4.605 equals the log of E is 1. So this becomes negative. Lambda is 1.21 times 10 to the negative 4. That's what I just found. T. And now all I have to do, the negatives cancel. Divide that answer by 1.21 exponent negative 4. Bam! Means, ignore my negative sign, it canceled. 38,059. If you remember, my initial unit was years. So, did I find a dinosaur bone? Uh, no, I did not find a dinosaur bone. This bone is only 38,000 years old, so therefore, I don't know, maybe I found an ancient, I don't know, dog bone. I have no idea. Anyway, how about let's do one more question. Because we know the equation. N equals N-O-E negative lambda T. So, we've done a problem where we found lambda. We've done the problem where we found T. Now let's do one where we find N. Well, that would be easy enough. So let's make this problem example three. And let's do this. N equals, let's say we started with, let's go do a thousand. Say we started with a thousand grams, atoms, it doesn't matter. How much of it would remain after, I don't know, maybe 9,000 years how much of this sample would remain the equation n equals n o e negative lambda t somebody's going to probably be saying why do you always write the equation because you need to memorize it n equals n o is a thousand e to the negative lambda we already know 1.21 times 10 to the negative 4 times 9,000. And what's so easy about this one? All we've got to do is plug it in the calculator. 1,000. Shift. Look at the E right above my LN. E to the negative 1.21, 10 to the negative 4, times, it was what, 9,000? Now, before I hit equals, let's use common sense. The half-life on carbon-14 is 5,730 years. 
which means 9,000 years is between half-lives. So after 5,000, it would reduce to 500, but it hasn't hardly been to the second. So this number should be between 500 and 250. Let's see what we got. 336. So we have done it correctly, and that's how much of that initial sample will be left. Anyway, there you go. There is our little lesson for today. 15 minutes in. Now I will leave you with this. I'm a happy turd frog. I'm a happy turd frog. I'm a happy turd frog. Yay! Turd frog. Yay! Oh, anyway. All right, deuces. I'm out. Bye. I'm out. Bye.